It's the dream, right? Parking up amongst the stunning sceneries of New Zealand in your car or camper van to camp for the night. Well, that isn't always the reality of camper van trip in New Zealand. In order to keep New Zealand beautiful, there are restrictions on where you can camp for free, more commonly known as freedom camping. To set the record straight, here's everything you need to know about freedom camping in New Zealand coming right up. the team behind backpackerguide.nz helping you plan an epic trip to New Zealand. In today's video we are going to go through where exactly can you camp for free in New Zealand. We'll talk about what type of vehicle you need for freedom camping, how to find out where you can camp, the penalties for freedom camping in restricted area as well as some awesome alternative camping options. Plus, stick around until the end of this video because we're also going to share with you 10 best free campsites in New Zealand. And by the way, we bring out new videos about New Zealand every single day. So click or tap the subscribe button for more helpful New Zealand travel tips. And with that, let's get on with this guide to freedom camping. Let's start with self-contained vehicles. The easiest way to talk about where you can freedom camp in New Zealand is to talk about whether you have a self-contained vehicle or not. A self-contained vehicle is a vehicle that meets the Caravan Self-Contained Certificate Standard and the vehicle must have a self-containment NZS5465 certification and the appropriate blue sticker to show this. The standard for self-contained vehicle must include a toilet, fresh water storage for at least three days, wastewater storage for at least three days and a rubbish bin with a lid. Check out the description below for a link to an article and a video going really in depth into what a self-contained camper van is and how to get one. Now that you know what self-contained vehicle is, now let's talk about where you can freedom camp with a self-contained camper van. If you do have a self-contained vehicle, then you are generally allowed to camp on district council land and department of conservation land, commonly known as dock land. However, each council and sections of dock land have their own set of rules about freedom camping. For instance, some councils will not allow freedom camping within one kilometer of the town, or you may only be allowed to stay in a car park for one night. We recommend that when planning to freedom camp in a particular town or area in New Zealand, simply Google freedom camping in Taupo for instance, and look on the council's website for reliable information. Council website addresses usually finish in .govt.nz. You can also ask the information center, but to make your life easier, we have a whole bunch of articles on backpackergarden.nz on where you can freedom camp around New Zealand, which we keep up to date especially for you guys. We'll link to a few in the description below. To get up-to-date information where there are restrictions or where freedom camping is prohibited on Dockland, we'll give you a specific link in the description below as well. Next up, where can you freedom camp in a non-self-contained vehicle? If you are camping in a tent, a car or a camper van without a self-containment certification, then you need to stay in a designated site that allows freedom camping for non-self-contained vehicles. These are usually free campsites or parking areas with a toilet block nearby. Traveling in a non-self-contained vehicle definitely restricts the amount of places that you can camp for free around New Zealand compared to having a self-contained camper van as you can't just park up on public land or dock land and expect it to be okay. Like we suggested before, because every area has different rules, take a look at the District Council websites and search on the dock website for free campsites and give Backpack a Guide a browse for free campsites as well. But if you run out of options, you can always rely on paid campsite and holiday park, which we'll talk about at the end of this video. They're pretty cheap and super convenient. So, what are the penalties for illegal freedom camping? Council officers and dock rangers patrol areas that are prone to illegal freedom camping, especially in the high season and during mornings and evenings. So, what if you are caught illegally freedom camping in New Zealand? While some officers or rangers may politely tell you to move on, you could also be given an instant 200 New Zealand dollar fine for one of the following reasons. Camping or preparing to camp where you are not allowed to? Damage to an area where you are camping in? Dumping any waste or rubbish? Refusing to leave an area when told to do so? 
Camping in an area only for self-contained vehicle when you are camping in a vehicle or a 10 days not certified self-contained and refusing to give information to an officer or ranger. In relation to the above, you could also be fined 5,000 New Zealand dollars if you behave illegally toward the officer or ranger. You could also get a court fine of up to 10,000 New Zealand dollars if you dump wastewater on public land, such as dumping wastewater tank from a camper van. Again, in our video about self-contained camper van, we'll tell you all about where to dump your wastewater, so make sure to check it out. How do you pay your fine for freedom camping? When you receive a fine for freedom campings, instruction on how to pay it will be on the notice. However, if you do not pay your fine, you will receive another notice to pay the fine plus an extra cost to be paid within 28 days. Refusal to pay could mean that you have to go to court and if you were using a rental vehicle, then the rental company can charge you the fine on your credit card. Custom officers at the airport can refuse you from leaving New Zealand if you have outstanding fines to pay. It's pretty scary stuff, but all of this can be avoided if you just do some research research on where you can freedom camp legally before you hit the road. But we've done the research for you, so you can just follow the tips on this video and backpackerguide.nz. What are your alternative camping options? So if you find yourself in an area where there are freedom camping restrictions or there are no appropriate freedom camping sites, then where else can you camp? To be honest, it is likely that you will have to pay to camp in a campsite or a holiday park. You can camp in dock campsites. The dock manages over 200 campsites around New Zealand, some of which are accessible by camping vehicles, while others are on hiking trails. They have basic facilities and range in price from zero to 15 New Zealand dollars per person per night. You can also camp in holiday parks. They have a lot more facilities and even the option to have a powered site so you can plug in your camper van to a power supply. Expect to pay between 20 to 15 New Zealand dollars for two people in a tent site or powered site. For more information, on what facilities you can expect in New Zealand campsites and holiday parks, check out the link to the difference between holiday parks and campsites in the description. So there are our tips on freedom camping in New Zealand, but as promised, here are 10 awesome free campsites, better yet you can access all of them with a vehicle. Number 1. The Waikari River Mouth. This campsite in the Hawke's Bay region of the North Island has great views of the river and access to the beach. Number two, the Greenish Shelter Campsite in the Arthur Pass National Park in the South Island is a great base for hiking. Number three, Robin Hood Bay in Marlborough on the South Island has amazing views but get in there quick because there are only 10 spots. Number four, Lake Pearson is another free campsite near Arthur Pass which is a great place for wildlife spotting. And five, probably one of the most isolated free campsites for vehicles is on the shores of Lake Monowai in the Fiordland National Park. Number six, Timpakao in the Gisborne region is on the northern end and it's a great riverside campsite with access to many walks. Seven, Mangatutu Hot Springs in the Hawke's Bay region has free campsites and free hot pools but it has a gravel road and fog to cross so it's generally Generally not suitable for motorhomes. Number eight, Lake Tennyson near Hadmer Springs in the South Island is an awesome place for mountain biking and hiking. However, the road is not suitable for vans over seven meters. Number nine, Thicket Burn is another free campsite in the Fiordland National Park near Lake Horoko, which we love for hiking and jet boat tours. And finally, number 10, there is a small campsite suitable for cars on the Lindis Pass, one of the main routes through the Sutherland. It's called the Lindis Pass Historic Hotel Campsite. So that's it for our guide to freedom camping in New Zealand. We hope it has answered all your questions on where you can camp for free. But if you do have any more questions or know any good freedom camping spots, then stick them in the comments below and help each other out. Also, if you found this video in any way useful, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more New Zealand tips and activities ID to New Zealand's Biggest Gap Year, where we are challenging ourselves to tackle 365 activities in only 365 days. Until then, have fun on the road.